and adharma, unrighteousness increases, then I manifest myself, O Bharata, descendant of Bharata. What he is saying here is, first of all, he addresses Arjuna as Bharata, meaning he is addressing all of us as Bharata. Bharata means Indian, descendant of the sage Bharata. But if you analyze the, the meaning of the word Bharata, it comes from two words, Bha and Rataha. Bha means light, Rataha means to enjoy, to revel. So what it means is, an Indian is one who revels in the light of consciousness, who revels in Atman. An Indian is not one who revels in material comforts. It's not one who revels in emotional or intellectual excitements. It's one who revels in the light of Atman, in spirituality. I wish we had this rule, that this becomes the qualification for you to get an Indian passport. I'd like to see how many of us get it. Bharata, oh Bharata, and yet you find it is there among our people, if only you have the eyes to see. Just a few days ago I happened to be with a group of foreigners in Rishikesh, where there was this, you know, there's an arti performed in the evening on the banks of the Ganga. And they were completely overwhelmed by the sense of devotion, the sense of contentment. And they were saying, the smiles, the, the, the spiritual fervor is something, the goodness that was exuded in that once, in the short span of time, is something they have not seen anywhere else in the world. The problem is, we are not making an effort to retain it, to grow in it and to leverage it. Leverage it doesn't mean use it for uh, material purposes. Use it for our own benefit. Even today, in spite of all the degradation, we are still a strongly spiritual country. So Bharata, what he's saying is, whenever there is a decline, in other words, what he's stating is simply, he's putting forward the law of demand and supply. When righteousness decreases, declines, you find, as is happening nowadays, you find there is a demand from uh, the people for righteousness, for values, for ethics, for morality. Don't you feel that? And when there is a demand, the supply is given. What is the supply? Don't wait there looking, waiting for Krishna to be born, please. It's, it, it, that's not what he means. What he means is, somebody will appear on the horizon, some people, it's not just one person. The supply of spiritual values will come and that's exactly what is happening now. So, demand and supply. The In India, it just so happened that there was a greater demand for this and therefore, the supply has been continuous, unbroken through thousands of years. This is what we have to be proud of. This is what we have to be happy about. This is what we have to use. Other civilizations came and went. They declined so fast, before you knew they were there, they had gone. But here in India, these spiritual, the civilization has lasted and along with it, the, the spiritual values have lasted. And yet, in these few hundred years, maybe three, four hundred years, we have found that there is a break in the Guru Shishya Parampara. And it is because of this break that all our problems have arisen. The root cause of all our problems is because of this disconnect between us and the great values that we have inherited. So we must make a concerted effort to get back these values, not only within ourselves, but to others, particularly the young. You have a huge number of youngsters appearing on the horizon with a great amount of energy and dynamism, and they don't have a sense of direction. And this sense of direction is not there because we haven't inculcated the values within us when we're not transmitting them to the young. And therefore, a whole generation of youngsters with enormous energy and vitality will go to waste if we don't make an attempt to revitalize society with these values. In the Atma Bodha, he says, 
it is vayuvat charet means it is like the wind spiritual values is like the wind a spiritually evolved person a man of realization operates like the wind how does this happen he moves from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure so the low pressure areas attract the man the spiritual values and that's how uh, he says i manifest myself and he says i he's not talking about krishna he means the personality of krishna he means atman the second thing that happens is just as when wind experiences resistance it moves away similarly a man of realization a person who is spiritually enriched if he finds that you are not interested he moves away he's got no axe to grind and the third is that he is extremely refreshing that's why you say he's like a breath of fresh air spiritual values come to us like a breath of fresh air many of you may have experienced there are people who come and say you know i didn't feel like coming today evening i was so tired and so many things to do so many weddings to attend but somehow i drag myself here but by the time it's 8 o'clock the same person says you feel so vitalized these values are like that they they come like a breath of fresh air dharma he uses the word dharma whenever dharma declines and adharma increases dharma has several meanings depending on the depth to which you go at the superficial level dharma means a code of conduct ethics at the philosophical level it dharma speaks of the inner working uh, the working of the inner personality the mind and intellect but at the deepest level dharma means inner nature what is your dharma your dharma is not the body your dharma is not the mind and intellect your dharma is atman the spirit so the divine nature of a person is the the true dharma and that is why the entire gita is sandwiched between two words dharma and mama mama means my dharma what is my essential being the whole of the gita is trying to tell us that atman is your essential nature and until you come to the understanding and realization of this these two words mama dharma you will not rest content until you come to know yourself it's like when a person experiences amnesia he forgets himself he does he may have the best of things around him but he will not rest content until he finds out who am i what has happened to me where are the missing years and when he finds out only then is he completely totally fulfilled similarly every one of us has lost our personality lost memory lost this connection with our true self the world is a mixture of good and bad there will never be a period in the world where the evil will be completely eradicated even krishna and rama and all the greatest sages and saints were not able to eradicate evil completely from the world but all that they succeed in doing is to tilt the balance in favor of righteousness dharma today there is a dire need for that somehow the balance seems to be tilting towards unrighteousness so when desires of the individual and collectively of the society go up then spiritual values go down because then you make compromises with your own conscience compromises with your own principle and that's how unrighteousness takes over so he's talking not only of society at large also within us whenever your spiritual level goes down somehow there is this within you you uh, there is a demand for values a demand for a guru demand for spiritual spirituality and you get it all that you have to do is sincerely want it that's why they say the number one quality of a student is mumukshatva the desire for liberation once you have it you don't have to worry about anything the spiritual values will come to your doorstep the guru will appear before you sakshat 
materialize before you. So, it is applicable in the absolute and the relative. It talks about realization, it also talks about how our duty is to uphold and spread righteousness within us, outside of us. Everyone says, oh, you know, we are in Kali Yuga and this, these are all things that happen. No, Kali Yuga may be outside, but within yourself you can be an embodiment of Satya Yuga. And this is the challenge before us. You can be an oasis of righteousness dharma in a desert of unrighteousness. So, this is what he is saying, when dharma declines and adharma increases, I manifest myself. For what purpose? What is this manifestation for? He explains in verse 8. Paritranaya sadhunam Vinashaya chadushkrutam Dharma samsthapanarthaya Sambhavami yuge yuge so what is the purpose of the avatar for the protection of the good and the destruction of the evil doers for the sake of establishing dharma righteousness i am born yuge yuge from age to age in every age this is an extremely powerful verse and it helps two types of people a devotional person is one who is not analytical, who doesn't think, is not rationalizing things. But at the same time, he has is content in and confident in the belief that there is a superior power that will take care of everything. And it is this belief, this faith, that keeps the person going. If you don't have this faith, or to the extent you don't have that faith, you will be insecure in life, you'll feel threatened. You, you find people like that, they constantly worry about all kinds of things. Oh, I don't know what is going to happen, the country is in such a state, uh, as if you are going to take care of the country. Whoever created the country will take care of it. This doesn't mean that you should be indifferent, please, that's not it. We are either in a state of indifference or you are interfering in things that are not your concern. A person who is concerned about the state of affairs will do his bit. Are you doing your bit to maintain the nation? Do, are you conscious of the national interest? That is not there. And then you sit and complain. So, the faith that there is a higher power that will take care of things. All you have to do is do your bit. This is the devotional approach. The intellectual approach is where you understand how it works. So, when an avatar, an avatar is one who is realized at birth. Krishna was considered an avatar, Rama was considered an avatar. What is the purpose of an avatar coming into being, coming into this world, manifesting in the world is, number one, for the protection of the good, to protect the good and destruction of the evil doers. Look at the choice of words. He doesn't say destruction of evil. He says destruction of evil doers, which means he doesn't consider anybody as evil. He believes they are good people who are simply performing evil actions. Very fine uh, view of things. And for establishing dharma. So, this is what is happening individually, even within ourselves, you need to do that. You need to protect your good qualities, nurture and nourish your good qualities, give them an environment that is conducive for their growth. Are we doing it? Are we conscious of what our good qualities are? The second thing we need to do is destroy our own evil propensities. Wherever you find you have a fault, go all out and attack it. And don't rest content until you have eradicated it. You must declare war on your own evil propensities. The entire Mahabharata war is nothing but an external depiction of what is going on inside of us. And the third is for promoting spiritual development. Are you conscious of the fact that you need to do certain things to promote your own spiritual evolution. Are you doing it? 
If you are able to do all this, you will find a meteoric rise in your spiritual level. At the social level, you have avatars like Rama. Rama protected Sugriva. Sugriva was suffering at the hands of his own evil brother Vali. And he helped him to kill Vali and establish Dharma. He brought about the reunion with Sita. Sita is the individual who because of confusion, because of distractions, she got distracted away from Rama, Atman and went foraying into the world of sense objects and therefore she was held captive by Ravana, the ten-headed monster means the sense organs. Krishna protected the Pandavas from the Kauravas and helped them to destroy the Kauravas and establish dharma in society. So this is the role. Sambhavami, I am born. When he says, I am born, he is speaking of Atman for the simple reason that as far as he is concerned, the personality does not exist. So, the thing to understand is that you and I don't need training programs to turn towards evil ways. There is an automatic pull, gravitational pull towards the lower. What you need is a powerful thrust to take off into the higher realms. And this is the purpose of the Bhagavad Gita. This is the purpose of all the rituals and festivals and all the reminders that are there in our culture of the higher. Because they have understood that we need it. You can't just be left on your own. You need help. You need reminders. But unfortunately, we've reached a stage where the very reminders for spirituality we are using as instruments to further get indulgent in the, in the world. So, this is the thing. Now, there are three categories of good people. One is avatars like Rama and Krishna. The second is extremely powerful positive people like Gandhiji who brought about a, a change among 300 million people, change in attitude and achieve the impossible. Third is every one of us has this choice. The choice is to turn towards the higher or to allow ourselves to devolve into lower and lower realms of indulgence and sensual uh, activity. So this is the choice that we have. Are we protecting our good qualities? Are we destroying our negative qualities? Are we making an attempt to establish ourselves on the spiritual path is the question. Next verse, verse 9. Janma karma cha me devyam evam yo veti tatvataha tyatva deham punar janma naiti mameti sorjuna One who thus knows my divine birth and action in essence having left the body, is not born again. Such a one comes to me, O Arjuna. So, there seems to be a bit of a contradiction here. In verse 8 he says, Sambhavami yuge yuge, I am born from age to age. I am born means a realized person. Atman is born from age to age. And in this verse he says, categorically, such a one comes to me, is not born again. Punar janmana eti. What does he mean? What he means is, one who has, you see, first of all, he is talking about rebirth. One who knows my divine birth and action in essence. If you understand, what is it that creates birth? What is it that propels you from birth to birth? For us to understand that, we need to understand what is it that propels us from experience to experience? What takes us from experience to experience? Why have we all come here? Desire. Desire to learn the Bhagavad Gita. At 8 o'clock, where will we go? Wherever desire takes you. 
some of us might go home, some of us might go out to dinner, some of us, I don't know what else you can do. So from morning to night, from birth to death, we are moving from place to place, propelled by desire. At death, what happens is, the only difference is that at death, this physical body is no longer conducive for the fulfillment of your desires and therefore nature provides us a wonderful opportunity to start afresh. So you get rid of this desire, uh, this body and take on another body and go to another environment which is far more conducive for the fulfillment of your desires. So this is what is happening from experience to experience, birth to birth, incarnation to incarnation. Now what he's saying is, a person who understands my divine birth and action in essence, tattvataha means at its very core. When you understand the relationship between Atman and action, in its entirety, in its essence, see it's like this, when you understand the relationship between Atman and action, you actually become Atman. Once you become Atman, it means you have no more desires. When you have no more desires, death takes place, but there is no rebirth. That's why he's saying, Punar Janmana Eti. Such a person is not born again. Then what happens to him? Such a one comes to me, O Arjuna. Comes to me means becomes Atman. So, what is the relationship between Atman and action is the question. Atman itself is inactive, but it causes all of us to act. So, all actions emanate from an inactive Atman. It's like saying, electricity is responsible for light in all bulbs. Isn't that true? Yet, electricity by itself is not fluorescent, doesn't have light. An entity which does not have light, electricity passing through a non-fluorescent bulb giving fluorescence, light. Similarly, this incredible combination of Atman functioning through the body gives rise to vibrant activity. So, one who understands where action springs from. See, when you look at actions, most of us tend to look at, oh, this is the good action, this is superb action, this is outstanding action, this is a dumb action. You concentrate only on the action. But when the action springs forth, if you have the capacity to understand that inactive principle Atman which is behind all actions, which is vitalizing all actions, then irrespective of the quality of the action, you will be in a constant state of revelry, excitement, because you have focused on Atman. And a person who in and through the fluctuations of the world, have different kinds of actions, has the ability to zero in on Atman before long becomes that Atman. Once you become Atman, you have reached the state of complete fulfillment, you have reached the state of completion and therefore you don't experience a sense of void or incompleteness and because there is no void or incompleteness, there are no thoughts, no desires going out into the world for fulfillment you don't have desires, such a person is established in Atman, he doesn't go through any further birth. So there are three stages of development of our personality. One is where you are looking out into the world for fulfillment. This outward looking approach in life comes out of a sense of unfulfillment, incompleteness, void that you feel with it. The second is where you have understood that the world cannot enhance your happiness. You are convinced that there is nothing in the world that can add to your sense of happiness. Therefore, you look within. This is a significant shift. 
in attitudes. And it is only when you make the shift in attitude that you can consider yourself spiritual. Until then, you can do what you like, but you are not spiritual. So the second state is where you are inward looking. And the moment you turn your pursuit within, this starts your path to greater and greater realms of happiness. The moment you look in inward, your happiness